so in this part we will be talking about how to design a rate limiter so a rate limiter in a network system is used to control the rate of traffic sent by a client or a service in the http in the http world a rate limiter limits the number of client request allowed to the uh, to be sent over a specified period like uh, if api request counts exceeds exceeds that threshold defined by, by the rate limiter then all the exec calls are blocked that is a uh, core functioning of a rate limiter it tries to limit the number of requests sent by a client to the server like there is a certain kind of threshold and if the request lim- uh, number of requests exceeds that threshold limit then all the access requests are blocked by the server and the user gets some kind of uh, uh, notification or can either be a software or hardware component which is used to basically total the number of requests sent by a client to few examples of rate and limit i i like a user can cannot write no more than two posts per second so in some websites so like this if they that is a the case then that website is using some kind of rate limiter to limit user to do that then uh, we can uh, a user cannot create uh, can create maximum of 10 accounts per day from that same ip address right if uh, like uh, in gmail or in certain websites we can generally in most of the websites we don't we can't create uh, more than 10 accounts from the same ip address so this is also a kind of a uh, rate limiting where we limit user to create that uh, more than 10 accounts in a day from a same ip address then uh, we can uh, we cannot claim a watch no more than five times a week for, from the same device so if we are limiting that then, then that is also a kind of a rate limiting so in this part we we, have, we, we in this uh, section we would be uh, we would be discussing about the eight uh, system design of a eight limiter system and before starting our design we can first uh, look uh, look uh, we can first uh, call out the benefits of this eight lim- limiter so uh, it prevents resource starvation caused by denial or of services or dos attack like uh, nobody can eat up all the resources by hitting those many uh, requests so it can help us to prevent uh, uh, prevent uh, that uh, scenario of dos attack and almost all api published by large tech companies these days and for some form of rate limiting for example twitter limits the number of tweets to 300 per 3 hours and google docs docs also has a api limiter which basically limits number of uh, read request per user in, in particular uh, uh, seconds of windows or so and the eight limiter also prevents dos attacks either intentionally or in- unintentionally by blocking the access calls as we heard before and the second advantage of eight limiter is, is it reduces cost so limiting access request means fewer servers right if we are limiting access request then that means we need few, fewer ser- servers to perform the activities and day to day tasks and allocating more resources to the high priority tasks so high prep high priority apis also so eight limiting is, is extremely extremely important for companies that use paid third party apis because they have been charged on number of times it has been hit or so right for example uh in uh, uh like checking the credit or making a payment with the retrieve health tech or so, so all these apis are generally charged on per call basis so they are having a rate limiter in place helps a lot and then uh, limited number of calls is essential to reduce the cost right then the third point is prevent servers from being overloaded to reduce the server load the rate limiter is used to filter out excess request caused by bots or user misbehavior so in this place we can use this to solve our problem or pen prevent system overload so yeah that is uh, about the eight limiter let's just now go step by step and uh, try to design our eight limiter system so uh, so before that so yeah so for that let's let's see our first step so our first step is to basically understand the problem so we got uh, this problem of eight limiter right now we can assume like they are a uh, candidate uh, got this problem from an interviewer about designing a eight limiter right now candidate will try to understand the problem by asking a certain set of questions and interviewer will try to answer it and in this way he be able to conclude uh, the requirements that he wants to uh, uh, build like the system he wants to build throughout this whole interview process so we can see one we can see so yeah, like the candidate first asks like what kind of rate limiter you want me to design a client side rate limiter or a server side api rate limiter he asks this to interviewer and then the interviewer applies focus on server side rate limiter for now okay then candidate again asks so it total api request based on ip address or the user id or some other properties right then interviewer replies it should be flexible enough to support different set of total rules like it should be able to uh, uh support different set of total rules like it's a support uh, custom behavior in this in a sense then candidate ask again what is the scale of system like you want me to build it for a startup or a big company which has lots of users or so interviewee 
interviewer it should be able to handle large user base so basically should handle highly scalable systems or large scale in a way candidate again ask so it separate service to the state limited be a separate service or should it be implemented in the app code interviewer that decision is up to you you can do whatever you want candidate do we inform user when they are throttled like our rate limiter should inform user when they are throttled interviewer yes yeah so that is that that could be a typical uh, interview uh, interview uh, interview activity which will happen between candidate and uh, and the interviewer and it will try to understand the problem by asking a certain set of questions so like we can have a frame of our questions in this way and we'll try to put it to interview and then we can get a fair idea of what we have to build so based on the answers of the question he got he tried to now lay down the requirements so we can see one by one requirements so the requirement is first first of all first is to basically acquire limit excessive request like accurately limit excessive request that is the goal of rate limiter after all and then maintain low latency like if we are limiting something right still there should be very low latency low, 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 low latency like the api calls would happen almost in the same time uh, as it was happening before the rate limiter like users should not experience any kind of lag or latency because of rate limiter that that should be the goal of it while while designing the rate limiter then use minimal memory like we don't want to basically over utilize our resources for this rate limiter after all we are trying to basically reduce the load on, on the server by implementing this rate limiter right so it should itself not uh, itself take minimal memory then it should support distribute we should support distributed rate limiting like he use a uh, user also asks candidate also asked this interview and he also told him to basically support distributed rate limiting across multiple servers or processes then other requirement is could be like provide clear exception to users when their request are throttled like if the users uh, users request are exceeding that certain limit then the users should get a, a response or some notification generally we give that 429 error to user and telling him that like his request are exceeding the limit so user will get a notified and some message we can display on the ui to tell that like please try after some time or so but that can be there then and the last point is to basically ensure high fault tolerance to avoid affecting the entire system in case of issue with the rate limiter right whenever there is a we should ensure that there should be high fault tolerance to avoid the affecting the entire system in case of issue with the rate limiter right whenever there is a issue with rate limiter we should not it should not affect the normal working of the api which it should have we should have that uh, fault tolerance in place okay so that is pretty much on the requirement side now let's move to our step 2 here we will try to propose a high level design and try to get a initial buy in from the interviewer on our design right so the first question is basically where to put our rate limiter intuitively we can implement a rate limiter on either on the client side or on the server side client side implementation is generally unreliable place to enforce rate limiting because uh, client request can easily be forged by uh, malicious uh, malicious attacks or some some hacking tools or, or basically even user can hack or, or use some bots to basically bypass uh, that rate limiter so you can use postman you can write some script it's a new girl you can do multiple things to basically bypass the rate limiter so client side is not that much good good idea however we might have to control over the client implementation also like we we don't have much control over the client implementation like you can use a, a consumer can use any form of ui to produce request or so right so that is that's why going with the server side implementation is better now on the server side we if you're talking about server side then we can play uh, play set limiters in uh, in two ways like one is in this way as we can see in the figure where the client request is going to the server and, and the server has a separate rate limiter so besides the client side at client and the server implementation there is an alternate way also for this which is this one where instead of putting a rate limiter at a at a api server like here we kept our rate, uh, like in the first uh, thing we kept our rate limiter on the api server like there was a separate thing on the server which was limiting the request so instead of keeping this a uh, rate limiter on the api server we can keep it somewhere in between like instead of putting rate limiter in the api server we create a limiter rate limiter middleware this is a middleware which throttles your api request okay right. so as in the uh, as in this uh, this we can see it right? rate limiter works uh, here we having a middleware to basically limit the uh, number of uh, requests to the api servers so now uh, let's assume like our api allows only two requests per second right and client sends three requests to the server then what will happen is the first two requests like as you You can see here like first two requests would be outed to server however the eight limiter middleware throttles the third request like this third request has been throttled and we will return that http status code uh, called 420 429 which will notify user that like uh, this uh, is your 
your your request has you have made too many requests like this http 429 response status code indicates a user has sent too many requests so like he will see it in the postman or in the browser or you can handle this uh, 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 as a student say like you have made too many requests please try after some time or so. so so this in this way we can limit our eight uh, our request using the eight limit and middleware then there are other couple of ways like cloud microservices have become widely popular these days and eight limiting is usually implementing within a component and called api gateway so like these microservices generally have a api gateway api gateway is a fully managed service that supports supports eight limiting itself it also supports ssl termination authentication ip whitelisting servicing static content and so on etc for now we only need to know that the api gateway is a middleware that supports late limit eight limiting too so we can use that too so while designing a eight limiter an important question to ask ourselves is where should the eight limiter be implemented on the server side or in the gateway like we can have it on the server side or in the gate api gateway so there is no absolute answer for this it depends on our company's current technology stack or so like and its engineering sources and priorities and all like there there can be certain guidelines which we can say like evaluate our our uh, tech stack and see uh, such as programming language we are using or which cats are we using and make our make our current programming language is efficient to implement and is our current programming language is efficient to implement that eight limit on the server side or not that we have to check then only we can suggest which to choose and then the second point is like identifying the eight limiting algorithms that fit our business needs like when implementing everything on the server side we need we have full control of the algorithm however the choice might be limited if we use third party gateway like if we're using third party gateway then to whatever algorithm is come that eight limit is uh, using us that will only that is the one we have to use and the third point is if we have already used microservice architecture and included a api gateway design to perform authentication and ip whitelisting and all then adding the eight limiter to it to the gateway makes more sense right so it depends on the current architecture how the things are then only we can make the wise choice on which route to go and then the last point is building our own eight limiting service service takes time so if we have if we don't have that much engineering resources to implement a eight limiter then going with a commercial api gateway is a better option right so that is uh, on the step uh, that is on the uh, step two part and now there are certain algorithms which we can use to uh, basically eight limit uh, uh, this uh, eight limit uh, our request so we'll see that in the next part hi people so in this part we would be discussing algorithms that can be used to build the eight limiter so the first algorithm is token bucket algorithm uh, this uh, token bu- bucket algorithm is widely used for eight limiting and uh, basically uh, it's a method of controlling the eight at which events occur in a system it is commonly used in networking to regulate the flow of data packets but can be applied to other system as well and in this algorithm them basically a fixed number of tokens is placed into a bucket and uh, whenever a uh, uh, uh whenever an event occurs a token is removed from the bucket and, and and if there are no tokens in the bucket then the event is not allowed to occur and the rate at which tokens are added to bucket determines the maximum rate at which events can occur right basically in this we uh, uh and we have a bucket in which we have uh, we are adding tokens at regular intervals and whenever an event occurs we remove that token out of a bucket and if the, there are no tokens left and then and then an event occurs then basically we are, we don't allow that event to proceed or, or even to a request to go further so basically we limit that request at that point of time and at the and the rate at which this uh, tokens are add, uh, added into the bucket determines the maximum rate at which the event can occur right so in this way we are able to limit the rate of request that have been hit uh, been hit uh, to server via this uh, via this algo and like uh, this it is used widely across different internet companies like both amazon and stripe use this algorithm to throttle their api request if we go in uh, more detail of of its working then basically uh, uh, it works as follows like it there is a container in a token bucket which has a predefined capacity and tokens are put into bucket at a preset uh, preset rates periodically so once the bucket is full no more tokens are added and as shown in, in the diagrams also the if it uh, puts two tokens uh, like uh, in the diagram we can see the capacity of a bucket is four suppose let us assume the capacity of the bucket is four and the if it uh, puts two tokens into buckets every Every second, right? So once the bucket is full, as the tokens will overflow. Then basically, each request consumes one token. When a request arrives, it checks if there are enough tokens in the bucket. And uh, so the token bucket algorithm takes two parameters. One is the bucket size, that is the maximum number of tokens allowed in a bucket. And second is a refill rate, that is basically number of tokens put into bucket every second. So if we have to calculate, then we can ask like how many buckets do we 
need so this varies and it depends on eight limiting rules like uh, let's take example like it is usually it, it is usually necessary to have different buckets for different api endpoints like uh, like for instance if a user is allowed to make one post request per second and then we add 150 friends per day and like five posts per second and three buckets are required for each user and if we need to total request based on ip address each ip address requires a bucket too so if the system allows a maximum 10,000 request request per second it makes sense to have a global bucket shared by all requests too in this way based on these criteria we can decide like what should be our bucket size and what should be our refill rate and how many buckets we need and on which properties we have to divide our bu buckets like it is ip address or any other property so in this way we can decide now certain uh pros of using this algorithm are like this is algorithm is very easy to implement it is memory efficient and basically token bucket allows a burst of effort for short periods like a request can go through as long as there are tokens left right so if the tokens are there the request will keep on going but it can have that burst of traffic few cons of this approach could be like uh, two parameters and algorithms are bucket size and token refill rate uh, so it might be challenging to basically tune them properly yeah, and some other cons are like token wastage in token bucket and algo tokens are generated at fixed rate regardless of whether they are used or not so if, to if the rate of traffic is lower than the rate of token generation then unused tokens will accumulate in the bucket and eventually be wasted this can lead to inefficient use of network resources. That's uh, uh, another uh, drawback is like token exhaustion. If the rate of traffic is higher than the rate of token generation, then the bucket will eventually run out of tokens. And this can, this can cause delays or even drop packets if the system is not designed to handle such requests. Such, such, such. And uh, then there is uh, then there can be a, some kind of potential unfairness also, like depending on the configuration, token bucket algorithm can be unfair for some applications as it can allocate more bandwidth to one application rather than another since it follows that burst traffic kind of mechanism also so these can be pretty much on the on side of a token bucket algo so this is pretty much on this algo which can be used for it limiting is leaking leaking bucket algorithm leaking bucket algorithm is a flow control mechanism used in computer networks and telecommunications to control the rate at which data is transmitted it works by treating a network as a bucket that can hold a certain amount of data at any given time right so this algorithm algorithm assumes that the data is coming into a bucket at a variable rate but that bucket can only hold a certain amount of data at a given time and if the rate of incoming data exceeds that bucket capacity the bucket leaks the data at a fixed rate until it is empty to empty enough to accept more data so in this way it works uh, like if we see this diagram so what we can say is leaky bucket algorithm is similar to the token bucket except that the requests are processed at fixed rate there it was in burst rate here it is in fixed rate it is usually implemented with first in first out queue the algorithm works as follows like as we can see here like when a request arrives the system checks if the queue is dark takes following two parameters it takes bucket size uh, which is equal to the queue size and this queue holds the request to be processed at a fixed rate and the second parameter is the outflow outflow rate which defines how many requests can be processed at at a fixed rate usually in seconds and yeah like uh, this leaky bucket algorithm is uh, also widely used and like uh, one uh, e-commerce company that uses uses this is Shopify. Now, like talking about the pros of this uh, leaky bucket algorithm, it is a it's uh, it's a it's a memory efficient uh, uh, efficient way since we have a limited queue size, so it does not occupy that much uh, that much space. And the second thing is like uh, requests are processed at fixed rate, therefore it is suitable for use case that a, a stable outflow rate is where where we need a stable outflow rate is needed is required. Like like uh, uh, token bucket works on the burst uh, a box bursted and this works on a fixed rate so where there is a stable outflow it is required then using this makes more sense few cons of this this algorithm are like a burst of traffic fills up the queue with old requests and if they are not processed in time then the recent request will be rate limited so that happens because old requests can eat up the queue and then the new request will not be able to persist and a few cons of this algorithm are like a burst of traffic fills up the queue with old requests so and and if they are not proceed persist in time then recent request will also get rate limited so that is bad so that's why that's the problem and then there are two parameters 
in algorithm so it might not be easy to tune in properly to get the desired results that we are expecting so yeah that is pretty much on the leaking bucket algorithm so now we can talk about another eight limiting uh, limiter algorithm which is fixed window counter algorithm so fixed window called counter algorithm is a simple algorithm that limits the number of requests that can be made within a fixed time window it works as follows as like the algorithm divides the timeline into fixed size time windows and assign a counter for each window right and then yeah so each increment each request increments the counter by one right and once the counter reaches the predefined threshold new requests are dropped until a new time window starts okay so in a window there is certain limit to which we can accept request and once that threshold is reached we stop requesting that request for that particular window and only when the next window starts we are able to start, uh, accept the request if i uh, talk about in more in subjective uh, subjective term then how it works is like we initialize a counter to zero at start and then when a request comes we increment the counter and if the counter is less than or equal to the maximum number of requests allowed within the time window then allow the request to proceed but if the number of requests allowed within that time window then eject the request and after the time window has elapsed we set the counter back to zero or start a new counter which is with, uh, basically setting the counter to zero only so if i have to take a take an example here then i can say suppose we want to limit number of requests to 10 per minute right then we should set a maximum number of requests allowed within the time window to 10 and the time window to be of 1 minute then for each incoming request we would increment the counter and if the counter exceeds 10 then we would reject the request and after 1 minute has elapsed we would reset the counter back to zero so in this way we can develop this thing if i will, uh, will uh if i have to talk about more concrete example then you can see this diagonal maximum 3 request per second right so in each second window if we more than 3 request i received an extra request are dropped like in the first one all three only three request received in first second so we accepted that second one we accepted three and then the one in orange are dropped the above three are dropped and in the third also uh, like you seeing that the second is moving here like at uh, one minute at one minute one second we got six six request and we just accepted three request at 1 minute 2 seconds we got four request and we accepted only three request and dropped one at 1 minute 3 uh, seconds we got two request so we accepted them all and at 1 minute 4 second we accepted uh, we got uh, five request and we accepted uh, three request and dropped or it limited above two request so this is this diagram denoting on the uh, x axis uh, on the y axis we have number of request and x axis is time and in this uh, the request in uh, uh, red are denoted as successful request and the request in orange are the eight limited request or dot request so in this way how the eight limiter or this algorithm can be used to limit the request so uh, one thing so one thing a major problem this with this algorithm is that is that a burst of traffic at edges of time windows could cause more request than allowed quota to go through consider the following case like if we see this figure closely then on the edges like if i'm talking about this 2 minute 1 second window then on the start and on the end basically edges we are getting large number of we are getting more number of request than the middle middle time so the system allows a maximum of 5 request per minute right so in this case we are allowing 10 request why because uh, so, so you see uh, in this window if we if i talk about like what to so suppose i'm assuming a time between from 2 minutes to 2 minutes 2 seconds right then when that 2 minute the first minute was ending then we got then we got five request and when the second minute was starting then also we got five request and our system allows only five request but they can if they are coming on burst then also they would be allowed like it, it does not ensure the uniformly distribution of request it is just like if it, that we do limit it there then just allow the request so that's why on the edges we can get spike like if the request are coming uh, there is a huge inflow of request that comes at the end of or end or the start of a time but then it will it will be able to take up more request because few requests will be accommodated in the previous window and there would be the next window this way this can give us an even uh, distribution if you follow this one so this and this uh, window you can see this is uh, here we are allowing 10 requests which is an uh, uh, actually our window only allows one of five requests so here we are allowing 10 requests which is twice the request that is being allowed so that is pretty much what the thing about sliding window log algorithm so sliding window log eight limit algorithm is a more advanced algorithm than a fixed window counter eight limit algorithm as it allows for more granular and flexible eight limit approach 
like we have seen in the fixed window counter algorithm had a major issue that it allows more requests to go through at the edges of a window right the sliding window log algorithm fixes the issue, fixes this issue so it works as follows is that like the algorithm keeps track of the request timestamp and timestamp data is usually kept in a, in, in some ca- some cache or so such as a sorted set of such as sorted sets of where is and when a new request comes in we remove all the outdated timestamps and these outdated timestamps are defined as those older than the start of current time window okay so whichever is older than the current time window we delete them and then we add a timestamp of new request to the log and if the log size is same or lower than the allowed count a request is accepted otherwise it is rejected okay so in this way we try to work like if we see this example right right uh, here we are saying our late limiter allows just two requests per minute right and usually linux timestamps are stored in a log or so however human readable representation of time is used in our example for better readability so yeah that's so, so the log in this is m is empty when a new request arrives at uh, one minute one second uh one hour one second then uh then this request is allowed since our q our our log is empty as of now then another new then like, this is our first request this is allowed then the second request comes at one minute 30 seconds and that is also allowed uh, because we are allowing two requests per minute so in after 30 seconds only it is coming so we are allowing this request now the third request comes at one minute 50 seconds so this is not allowed because uh, this is not allowed because uh, we already have two requests in that one minute window or so right and after the insertion of the log size state then at last this uh, a new request comes at uh, sorry then at last the fourth request comes at one minute fourth request comes it arrives at uh, one hour one minute 40 seconds so the request in this range are within so request in this range are within the latest time frame but so and now we see when this arrives right like we see we already have three requests right but uh, one minute one and thirty seconds. Like the first two, if we will, if we will play on timestamp, then first two, uh, the timestamp of first two requests were more than one minute than the uh, timestamp of the current request, right? So we can simply exclude that and question, and and so whatever. So we can say whatever. So when we get a request, right, we can simply subtract. We can see one minute behind and see it, how many requests are there. Uh, uh, like uh, we can have it in latest time frame. But so uh, when we get this request, right, we see like it is coming as one hour. One hour, one, one hour, one hour, one minute, forty seconds. Right. So we can say all the requests which are one a minute behind this, which is at uh, one hour forty seconds, those are outdated. So two outdated timestamp in, in for this case would be our one hour one second one and one hour thirty second ones. These are the outdated ones, outdated timestamp. So we will simply remove that, uh, move these from our log. And after the remove operation, the log size will become two, as it will only have that uh, uh, one hour fifty second request and and the current one hour, uh, one one minute, 40 second request. Hence, we will allow this request. So in this way, whenever we are getting a request, we'll see the timestamp. Uh, we'll, we'll try to go that uh, the, uh, the window size times and behind and see how many requests are. Uh, uh, and, and we'll see like whichever uh, time uh, request I have, I have, I have before the timestamp, uh, like uh, behind, uh, b- before the timestamp of this, uh, this time, time of one min- minute behind or whatever is the window size. Like we can simply say like, uh, when we get a new request, what we will do, like, we will take out its timestamp and then we'll subtract the window size out of that and we will get the, our old times, uh, uh, the the start of that window size timestamp and then we will see whichever requests are older than the, that, uh, that, that timestamp, those will be simply removed from that log and then we will check like if our log size is less than the max allowed request size or in that window if it's so then we can simply allow this incoming request else so we can we will not allow this request and then just log that in our uh, just log that in our logger so in this way we can do it like if i have to reiterate how it works then i can say initialize the sliding window of fixed duration and log of timestamp for incoming request and when a request comes in add its timestamp to log first and then remove timestamp from the log that are older than the sliding window duration right and the duration we can calculate out based on the current time st- and uh, uh, timestamp of the current request based on the current timestamp minus the window size right and if the number of timestamp in the log is less than or equal to the maximum number of requests allowed within that sliding window duration then allow the request to proceed and if the number of timestamps in the log exceeds the maximum number of requests allowed within that sliding window duration then simply eject that request so in this way how it works and one thing to note here is that the algorithm allows for more flexible rate limiting than the fixed window counter rate limit it can accommodate burst of request without exceeding the overall rate limit like always our window our uh, like always we will not allow more than the 
size of a window or more than the uh, rate that we are allowing it. Like it will never happen. Like it will uh, allow twice or more than the like that was happening in the previous algo eight fixed window. We were, we were on the edges. We were allowing uh, double the size of the window. Uh, window. Uh, but here we will never allow that. That will never happen. Like it will always limit the request to the number of uh, to the size of the window. And however, it also requires more computations. But it requires more computations for that. And as it needs to maintain a log of timestamp and check the number of timestamp in the log for each incoming request. Like at each each incoming request here, this algorithm needs to make this check, and then only it can decide whether to uh, allow that request or stop that request. And uh, at, at the same time, he has to maintain the log of all the requests which are there in that particular window. So if I am talking about the pros of this uh, algorithm, then I can say rate limiting implemented by this algorithm is very accurate. In any rolling window, request will not exceed the rate limit, as we saw. And the cons are that the algo algorithm consumes a lot of memory because even if a request is rejected, its timestamps might still be stored in a memory. So it will take memory, right? So that is a con of this. That is pretty much on the sliding window log algorithm. This part we will be talking about sliding window counter algorithm. So sliding window counter rate limiting rate limiter algorithm is another variation of a rate limiting algorithm that uses a sliding window to track the number of requests made with the specific period uh, made uh, made within a specific period of time. It acts as a hybrid approach that combines the fixed window counter algo and sliding window log approach. The algorithm can be implemented by two different approaches like and we will see that in uh, in a while so uh, and so one impl one implementation that we can talk about is uh, is uh, we can see this diagram so uh, let's uh, let's assume like we have a eight limiter that allows maximum seven requests per minute right and there are five requests in the previous minute and three in the current minute okay so for a new request that arrives at 30% position in the current minute a number of requests in the rolling window is calculated using the formula using the, this formula which would, uh, which is like request in current window plus request in previous window into overlap percentage of the rolling window and the previous window so like here you see like uh, if a request come at this intersection then uh, we can say like in previous minute how many uh, requests we got we, we can see it the one in orange iowa request so we got five requests in the previous minute and three requests in this uh, uh, in the current minute and as of now our total requests are occupying 70 percent of the previous uh, uh, minute window and the 30 percent of the current minute window right so we the formula we are which we are using is we can say request in current window which is three plus request in previous window which is five and we will multiply this uh, account with the OLF percentage of the rolling window and uh, of OLF percentage of the rolling window and the percentage of a rolling window and previous window like which is I think 70 percent here right so by formula I can say like uh, three which is my current window request plus five into 70 percent which is uh, 0 0.7 so this will sum up to 6.5 request so depending on the use case the number can either be rounded down or rounded up in uh, in our example we can round, we are rounded that to this 6.5 to 6 and we can say only max seven requests are allowed since the eight limit allows maximum of seven requests per minute the current request can go through however the limit will be each after is even one more request so the next request after this will be uh, will be blocked or dropped due to the uh, uh, will be dropped so in this way with we works like instead of directly playing on time step we play we are using a fixed window counter approach by basically adding up all the requests that we achieve is uh, receive in that uh, time step but but uh, we are also getting the percentage of the previous window window two we will talk about the high level design of a rate limiter so the basic idea of rate limiting algorithm is simple at high level we need a counter to keep track of how many requests are sent from the same user ip address and if the counter is larger than the limit the request is uh, de uh, is uh, de swallowed or stopped trade or adopt so where shall we store these counters the question is that now so using the database is not a good idea due to slowness of this success like generally databases are secondary to it so it is slow to access that in memory cache is chosen because it is fast and it supports time-based expiration 32. So going with an in-memory catch such as Redis or and all would make sense here because they are fast to access and there's also a time-based expiry uh, system play in place in that. For instance, let's, uh, Redis uh, 11 is a popular option to Im implement rate limiting. It is an it is an in-memory story that offers two commands, increment and expire. So that I in increment is, is increment command is basically to increase the stored counter by one and the 
expire command it sets a timeout for the counter and if the timeout expires the counter is automatically deleted so in this way these two commands can help us to achieve there it is like if you can see in the diagram we have created a it we have a, we have we have a eight limiter which is staying between client and the app server and then the eight limiter is getting this these counters and this uh, counters and uh, logs and all for for eight limiting from this air is catch so if i have to uh if i have to explain this flow then basically client sends a request to a uh, eight limiter middleware the eight limiter is acting as a middleware and then the eight limiting middle uh, middleware fetches the counter from the corresponding bucket in the air disk and checks if the limit is reached or not if the limit is reached then the request is rejected but if the limit is not reached then the request is sent to this api server meanwhile the system also increments the counter and saves it back to the head is so in this way how the data flow happens between these components so that is pretty much on the high level design so in the uh, in the next step we will uh, try to deep dive in the in certain parts of this uh, system design yeah so the high level design we have seen so far does not answers all of the questions like it does not answers how are the eight limiting rules created and where are the rules stored and then how to handle the request that are eight limited so in in this part we would be we will try to get answer of these questions regarding the eight limiting rules and then go over the strategy is to handle eight limited request and finally we will uh, discuss eight limiting in the distributed environment too it's it's detailed design detailed design also detailed design and so so let's start, just deep dive in the design so let's first start by uh, defining the eight limiting rules so let's suppose we have a open source eight limiting component then we will peak account a peak inside to and then like if we will have a peak inside that component then we will find uh, these rules like there would be uh, a domain specifying whether it is messaging then there would be descriptors then there would be the eight limit the eight limit unit it could be day second minute or so and then request by unit uh, uh, request number of request allowed in that unit like if it is day then number of request allowed in that day if minute then how number of request allowed in that minute okay so then these uh, rules so the client these rules are so so that that, that clients are not allowed to log in and then uh, they uh, like like uh, we can have multiple rules like, let's suppose like we have a rule for messaging and then the message we will we can define like uh, the key of uh, we can provide description to it and there we can specify the message type and then the eight limit but there on the un in the units we can specify day and the request by unit we can specify five so this says that we cannot send five messages more than like a particular user uh, uh, cannot send five marketing match messages more than five per, per uh, marketing messages in a day that, that is this uh, rule defined then now let's create one more rule for basically login or authentication we can give the domain as authentication and then in the description we can type our key as or type and value as login and then in the eight limiter we can specify unit as minute and request by unit as five so this will then stay will, will state that right, the, we, a user cannot log in more than five times in a minute and and basically we generally write these rules in a in some kind of configuration files and save them on disk uh, save them on disk and then in case the request is exceeding this eight limit then api returns a http like api should uh, drop that request and should return some response to the user and this response is generally http response uh, which with a response code code of 429 which states too many request has been sent by client depending on the use case we may ensure that the eight limited request to be processed later also so for example if uh, the some orders are eight limited then due to system overload then we may keep those orders to process later like there may be a scenario that there may be a need like when we we still want to cater those eight limited request in future like uh, in the case of orders uh, when we are placing orders and the system has the high load then our eight limited is stopped in those orders to be executed as of now but we have to somehow preserve these orders and later on uh, when we will when the system load is then we can basically allow these orders to go also so this kind of mechanism is might be also required as per our use case or so then the, there is a, there are eight limiter limiter headers so that stays uh, like then basically it tells like it tells the user like how like whether they are limited or not like these are the http response headers that are it turned when and some of, some of these headers uh, are like x8 limit remaining that that states that the remaining number of allowed requests within the window and then there's x8 limit limit it indicates how many calls that line can make by by time by, by time window and then there's x8 limit data after that is the number of seconds to 
to wait until you can make a request again without being throttled. With this request headers, we can can to the uh, send back to the client, and the client can make their decision, or the UI can tell them to basically wait for this much time, then don't then only they can retry again and so so they can use to assume this headers, and we can write the logic as per the as per the behavior we want to achieve. And when when a user sends too many requests, then a 420 too many requests uh, uh, and the X8 limit X8 limit is. It x8 limited i had i turned to the client generally okay now let's see the diagram this is a, this is our detailed design of our eight limit i so in this if you will see closely like the client and the eight limit i middleware was still there and the app servers were there but we are now having other components too like cas workers rules headers message queue and all so let's see them one by one so yeah like so first to start with rules rules are stored on this so workers frequently pull like these rules we see on the top right these are stored in some kind of disk or so and these are frequently pulled up, uh, and basically this workers frequently pull rules from disk and store them in a in a cache right and then when a client sends a request request to server the request is sent to the eight limiter middleware first right the request will come first here and then the eight limiter uh, middleware loads rules from the from the cache and if it fetches the counters and the last request time stamp from this uh, disk cache like this uh, the cache for rules is separate which is holding uh getting data from workers and the cache for storing in uh, counters and timestamp is di different that is the said is catch so based on the response the eight limited decides and based on the response and the data gets from edges and the rules uh the eight limited decides that if the request is not eight limited it is forward to the api server but if the request is eight limited then uh, then eight limiter returns uh, to a 429 too many request uh, uh, back to uh, to the client and in the meantime the request is either dropped like if we don't need the request then we can simply drop it or we can forward that uh, request to us some some kind of messaging queue or so so like in future if the load on the system in uh, the cases then we can consume it like in case of order right suppose our system is uh, it's getting too many order request and our late limiter in that case will limit that request and will stop those request and then instead of dropping those request it will send those request to the message queue and then when the load on the system will reduce then these request would be processed from the message queue and can be uh, sent sent back to app server and we can do whatever we want to do so in this way also we can so we can basically we have two options either to drop our request or based on our need uh, use case we can also preserve them in some kind of messaging message queue also so yeah that is pretty much on the on the high on the detailed high level design of this thing about yeah so in this part we will be talking about distributive rate limiter so building a rate limiter that works on a sin single server might not be that much difficult however scaling the system to support multiple servers and con concurrent is a different story altogether there are two challenges while we are building this this kind of distributive rate, rate limiter one is the as condition and other is the synchronization issue so we will one by one see them in detail so we have seen previously the rate limiter works as follows it reads the counter value from the address and check if the counter plus 1 exceeds the threshold if not then increment the counter value by 1 in address and just allow that request to flow to server here the is conditions can happen in a highly concurrent environment as shown in the diagram so in the diagram we can see we have two requests request 1 and request 2 So uh, initially, we can assume the counter value of address is three. Now, when that these two requests concurrently hit the counter value before and before either of them adds the value back, each will increment the counter one by one and add it back without checking the other third. Right? So, like uh, suppose the request one came uh, came first, but and it uh, from the address it hit, hit the counter value as three. And request two also came a bit late, but still till the time the request one has not written anything inside the address, right? So it will also hit counter three, and then the request one will increment counter three to counter four, and request two will also increment counter three to counter four. So and both the request or threads believe that they have the correct counter value four. However, the counter value should be five for the request two. So this can be a problem where basically, and if our max request limit was four, that means and uh, we can only allow request one, but because of this. Uh, Concurrent behavior, we have allow, allowed request two also. So in a way, our eight limiter failed because it allowed more than the threshold value. So to handle this, locks to solve this problem, locks or uh, that uh, transaction locks or locks are the most obvious solution for solving these conditions. However, locks will significantly slow down the system. So two strategies are commonly used to solve this problem. 
one is the lua script and other is the sorted sets data structure in redis so if you want to go in detail a link has been attached to this thing you can refer to that and see how we can solve this problem but this is a this is condition is a problem when we are building a distributed system so then we need a way to solve this thing and so in this part we would be talking about synchronization issue synchronization is another important factor to consider while building a distributed weight limiter so if we want to support millions of users then one weight limiter server might not be enough to handle the traffic why because one weight limiter will act as a single point of failure and it will if it fails then basically there's no weight limiter for our system and then request can go in n uh, like there's no limit to the request that i've been sent in to that that i've been sent to our app server then basically the load on the system will increase and there's a chances of dos attack too and also basically our whole system might fail if we are not thinking on in that direction so to support uh, to so there's therefore there's a need of multiple age limiter while uh, uh, while they're building a distributive distributive uh, uh, distributed system, uh, system and when we are using multiple age limiters we need uh, some kind of synchronization between them for example in this diagram we can see client 1 sends request to age limiter 1 and client 2 sends request to age limiter 2 and as we know the web is web tier is a stateless uh, architecture and so clients can send to different age limiter Uh, a different eight limiter to the like clients can send request to different eight limiter to like in this in the second diagram we see like client 1 is sending now the request to eight limiter 2 and client 2 is sending the request to eight limiter 1 so this could be a problem because uh, uh, a, uh, like if client 2 is sending request to eight limiter 1 then eight limiter 1 does not know like before this how many request has been sent by client 2 to eight limiter 2 so like suppose client 2 has all uh, like eight limiter only uh, only allows five requests per user per minute and client 2 has already sent five requests to eight limiter 2 but now since it it is sending the first request to eight limiter 1 eight limiter 1 will assume that it is the first request and still uh, the threshold is not achieved and the uh, client can send four more requests so you will simply allow the request to go to the uh, app server which is wrong because uh, we can uh, we are now allowing more than five requests to go to the app server via a same client in in that in that one minute time span so that basically uh, uh, that is basically against the eight limiter principles and here the eight limiter fails one one possible solution is to use sticky session session that allows client to send traffic to same eight limiter again and again to solve this problem of synchronization this solution is not advisable because uh, um, because it is neither scalable not flexible like maintaining a sticky session for all the user like client 1 is mapped to 8 uh, 8 limiter 1 and client 2 to 8 limiter 2 maintaining this sticky session is not advisable because it's not scalable like uh, how like for each client how will you uh, maintain those things and all it will become difficult to maintain and it will occupy lots of memory and all a better approach is to use a centralized data store like redis and in this like we can see in this diagram so then in this case we will be basically saving our saving this information inside the redis so whenever a request from client 1 comes then we can eight limiter can see uh, from this it can read the data from redis and see like how, how much request till now has been received from this client 1 so in the same way we can find out like uh, every time a request come we can just make a query to redis and get number of requests already made by that particular user in that particular time span and in this way we can increment our counter and decide like whether we should allow this request or not so yeah that is pretty much on the distributed weight limiter part last step of this system design on the eight limiter we will try to app up things so uh, when we are apping up the interviewer can ask or we can uh, tell something about the performance optimization so performance optimization is a common topic in system and design interviews we will cover two areas to improve here like first first is like that multi data center setup is crucial for eight limiter because latency is high for users located far away from the data center right so the first thing to consider while doing performance optimization is like considering that multi data center setup a multi data center setup as as because latency is high for users if they are located far away from the original data center so so most cloud servers service uh, service providers build many edge server locations around the world for example cloudflare has multiple uh, uh, distributed edge servers uh, distributed on different geographies so traffic traffic is automatically outed to the closest edge server to reduce the latency like basically traffic is uh, automatically outed to the closest state limiter to basically uh, uh, close or we can call it edge server to reduce latency so in this way how a typical typical performance optimizes 
is is done by CDN. In the same way, we can do it in the eight limiter world also. Like we can send a request to their nearest, send a eight limiter request, send a request of client to their nearest eight limiter based on the geography or so. So one way is that the second uh, way of performance optimization is to synchronize data with eventual consistency model. So we will talk about this eventual consistency model in detail when we are on that consist consistency part. But for now, you can assume like instead of immediate consistency, we are going with that eventual consistency model. So it will reduce the load on system, and basically we can expect like after a certain while consistency can happen or so. So these two techniques are there to basically optimize the performance of the eight limiter. Now the second part is the monitoring thing. So after the eight limiter is put in place, it is important to gather the analytics data to check whether the eight limiter is effective in limiting the request or not. So primarily, primarily here we want to make sure that the eight limiting algorithm is effective. And the second thing is the eight limiting rules are effective or not. So for example, if the eight limited rules are too strict, then many valid requests are dropped. Right? If we have given reduced the threshold value as too low or what properties like IP address and all like are not that much uh, right, then basically some valid requests will also get dropped out, and which we don't want. And in this case, we want to relax. So, so in this case, we want to basically relax our rules a little bit. One another example which where monitoring can help is like we notice our eight limiter becomes ineffective when there is sudden increase in traffic, like flash sales or so. Right. So in this scenario, we may place the algorithm to support bus traffic. Like whenever we are hosting some kind of flash sale or some kind of bulk traffic in our like some hackathon or some event on our website or so, then basically opting a, a different algo or different rules for that particular time span would be more benefit, more would be more right than going with that uh, the old approach or the generic approach because uh, then it, it will prevent us from uh, user users it will not uh, user will not uh, the request of users will not drop in that scenario and they will still be able to access our website so and for for for, uh, for such scenario uh, like going with the algo of token bucket makes more sense if our if we want a bus or that flash sale kind of uh, load if you expect in that then going with the token bucket is a more sensible choice of algorithm in that scenario last we can uh, wrap up what all we have discussed while designing this uh, the, the system uh, designing the eight limiter system so we started by telling what is uh, getting in the requirements and all and then we propose certain algorithms which we can use to basically limit limit uh, the request to uh, to server like we can have the token bucket algorithm then there was a leaking bucket algorithm then there was a fixed window algorithm then there was a sliding window log and the last one was sliding window counter algorithm after this we also discussed the system architecture too and we also talked about uh like um the detailed system architecture and all and then uh, the thing that we took that needs to be considered would be the hard versus soft rate limiting so here the hard means the number of requests request cannot exceed the threshold and the soft means the request can exceed the threshold for a short period of time like in a scenario of a burst or a flash sale we can exceed the threshold so if we are implementing that then we can opt for a soft rate limiting then rate limited and at a uh, rate limiting at different level is different like like in this chapter we only talked about the http layer which is basically the application layer, but it is possible to apply rate limiting in other OSI layers too. For example, uh, for example, we can also apply, and by OSI, we mean that open system interconnection model, that OSI model we have, right? So we have different OSI layers, so we can ap apply rate limiter to different OSI layers too. Like it could be a physical layer. The layer one is the physical layer. It could be the layer two, the data link layer, the layer three, the network layer, the layer four, the transport layer, and layer five, the session layer the presentation layer and the layer seven, the application layer that we saw here. And now let's talk about some best practices. So that could be like use client catch to avoid making frequent API calls, like try to catch data on the client side instead of always making the API call. So as we then the second thing is understand the limit and do not send too many requests in a short time frame, right? So when we are writing the uh, client code also, basically understand the limit and not and the other things in a way so that we can so not send too many requests in a short time frame. And the other pet other think uh, other thing that can be followed is include code to catch exceptions so, uh, so your client can so your client can gracefully recover from exception right and then basically add sufficient back of time to yeah that is pretty much that's all on the eight limiting part so we are pretty much done with the system design of eight limiting of a eight limiter thank you <laughs>